Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This is uh, part number three of the web scraping series uh, using Node.js and Puppeteer. Um, yeah, and uh, in this video I want to make a another adjustment to the code, another improvement. The last time we uh, added the location and the price and we also um, adjusted our wait for function here. Actually, we were using just the wait for um, function before where we would wait for the uh, container of the products. This time around, we are waiting for a specific length. All right, so in this video, I want to implement scrolling since on Facebook Marketplace, um, as you scroll the page, it will load in more products. So there's no pagination, but we have some kind of endless scroll load in more products kind of functionality. All right, so the first thing you want to do is uh, access the document. So we want to call page.evaluate once again here. And um, we want to make sure we are performing this page that evaluated before we're going through the products since we want to scroll our products into the view. And um, in this closure, we would like to set up an interval. And this interval will do the scrolling work. So let's define a constant to interval and use the set interval function call here. All right. And then we want this interval to execute every second. Let's say every second for now. And then in here, we are very interested in the length of our products. So let's first define a variable called, let's just call it length. And uh, this will be um, the length for the product, right? So let's do document query selector all. And uh, just grab the selector down here so we don't have to write it again. Oh, let's do back ticks. And then at the end of this, add dot length. All right, so how do we scroll the page? Well, if you are familiar with JavaScript to scroll, we will need to use the window dot scroll by uh, function. And uh, in here we can add how much we want to scroll. So we don't want to scroll um, horizontally. So we just put in left zero, but at the top, we want to do some scrolling. And uh, to scroll to the bottom, we can just put in document, document, element, and then on the docu document element access the scroll height. Congratulations, now we are scrolling the page, but this uh, page is gonna keep on scrolling forever. So we need some way to stop it. And that's why I defined this dot len because we want to reach a specific len, a specific length. So um, let's say we want at least 100 items to be loaded in. To do that, let's make a new statement and check is the length of all these items. Is it 100 or above? If so, we would like to clear our interval. All right, let's try to run this code. This code will not work as expected. It's not gonna work how we like it to be, but let's just see it in action. Oh, you can see here, it's scrolling. 
And it stopped. Very good. There's one problem though. As we were scrolling and stopped, we already we already evaluated the products. And uh, that is because when we start this set interval here, we are starting another thread and it's doing some work in the background while this code executes. So what we need to do is we need to return a promise inside this evaluate. And to do so, at the top we can say return new promise and then put in our resolve and reject function as you usually would do when you're returning a promise. And then wrap everything in here like that. Uh, there's one little thing we need to do since we're returning promise it, and that is to resolve when we reach that length we're looking for. So here we can call resolve. And let's, uh, let's try to run the code once again and see how it works out. Notice the terminal here to see um, when this code gets executed. So here, doing some scrolling, 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 scrolling. Code still not being executed. And there we go, we reached 100. And uh, here we have all the different products. All right, this is looking pretty good so far. Now there's one thing we would like to improve before considering this code done. And that is to have a fallback just in case we don't have 100 items. It would be a little awkward if we were waiting forever to get 100 items, but the search keyword and the location didn't really give that many items. So what we can do is we can define a, um, a uh, variable called previous and uh, let's uh, go up here and before the interval let's define previous let's just call it preview for now and then in our set interval we can do a little check here to see if the previous iteration of products is set and also is the previous iteration is it the same because if it's the same well then we didn't get any new products right and then we actually want to resolve the promise a little earlier and also we want to clear the interval so there's no nonsense going on in the background and uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Now we just need to remember to set our previous item. And uh, we are always doing that at the bottom. So if we set prove to length, we have here the amount of products, right? So let's say we go through this function once, we get 20, we assign previous to 20, the function runs again, we get a new length and then we compare that 20 with the new length. And if it's the same, we just resolve the function early. And uh, yeah, that should actually be all. Um, One little improvement we can make just to clean up the code is to move this one, uh, this condition up here. Um, since we just have two if statements now I'm doing the same thing, which is a little, it's not so nice to look at. So let's move it up here and then clear this one 
out. All right, that looks good. Um, yeah, that's all for this uh, video, guys. Um, I don't think I will be uploading any more videos for this series, so um, yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you in the next one.